Well, good morning and welcome to Bobby and I'm sure most of you know by now uh, my name is Sue I lead the church at Bobby real privilege good to be with you so this morning 23rd of, of August um, we are having our first um, special service aimed at our families young families in church and um, half an hour should be fun videos and and some activities and um, I think we're we'll making cards for people who maybe can't get out to church so um, if you want to be part of that um, just let one of us know so that we make sure um, numbers are okay. Um, you can text, you can send um, a, a phone, phone me, or you can um, email in on info at bobbychurch.org, um, uh, email address, um, just to let us know. It'd be good to see some of you there. So the last two Sundays we've met in church, it's been very quiet. We had communion and a reflective service. Very different to normal, but an opportunity to meet with God. And there were still spaces at those services. So next week, um, the 30th of August, we're planning on doing a short reflective service again um, for, for at 11 o'clock in the morning. Something similar on Sunday the 6th of September, um, a reflective service in church. And then we thought, we pray that the weather's going to be good. Um, we thought we'd try and do another picnic. So um, if you want to come to reflective service, that, that will be for adults. But then maybe at 12 o'clock, um, we can gather in the churchyard, weather permitting, um, to have a, a picnic, bring your own picnic, your own chair, um, your own drink and it'd be good to be able to meet again. It was so much fun um, the last time we did it so let's hope and pray that that can go ahead. So um, home groups are starting up again soon, some of them will still be meeting the holidays so if you want to be part of a home group you're very welcome. Um, again let me know and we can get that sorted out for you. So this morning um, we've got a song from Lewis, um, we've got Stuart up in Norfolk who's doing our Bible reading for us still very much part of our church family and um, then we've got prayers um, towards the end so I'm going to hand over now to Lewis This is my soul my saviour God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.
sent him to die, I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my sin. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Living sacrifices change lives. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not have the same function. So in Christ we, through many, form one body and each member belongs to each other. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you um, for that reading. Um, and I love this passage from Romans. Um, it's a story all about transformation. And when I reread them, this passage earlier in the week for this morning service, one of the things, um, first things that came to my mind was one of my favourite, very favourite ever children's storybooks, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, I'm sure most of you already know this story. But just in case any of you don't, it's a story written for very young children and it tells the story of what happens to a tiny egg lying on a leaf in the moonlight. And when the sun comes out, um, 
the egg hatches out into a caterpillar, a very hungry caterpillar. And the caterpillar eats and eats until it gets really fat, until it can't eat anymore. And at that point, it spins a cocoon. It stays shut away in the darkness for more than two weeks. And then eventually it starts nibbling and it nibbles a hole in the cocoon and eventually pushes its way out into the daylight to discover that it is no longer a caterpillar. It's emerged as a beautiful butterfly, totally transformed. It's a fantastic example, isn't it, of transformation and it illustrates really well um, the way what can happen when we give our lives um, to God and we allow him to work in and through us to transform us into all that he had intended us to be, all that he's created us to be. And in this letter, Paul's talking about offering ourselves as living sacrifices for God to work in and through. And what that means is offering our lives to God, all that we have and all that we are, out of thankfulness for all that Jesus has done for us. When we offer our lives to God, it's amazing the difference he can make. It doesn't mean we're going to have an easy life, but it does mean we won't have to spend all our time and energy trying to change ourselves, trying to be good enough, because God will make it possible. <clears throat> when we go through times of struggle and difficulty too, we'll begin to understand it's all part of God's much bigger purpose for our lives. But change and transformation doesn't happen overnight, does it? It takes a lifetime. The change can be a bit scary. It can be challenging. It can be really painful sometimes. But if the end result is becoming more like Jesus, then I guess it's worth it, isn't it? So going back to the story, I wonder, let's think about how that little caterpillar must have felt when it first hatched out of the egg into the hot sunshine. It came, I guess, as quite a surprise. A bit like the time that maybe lots of us can remember when we first came to know Jesus and all of a sudden um, we experienced his love for us, the warmth of his love and his care for the very first time, a very special moment. And maybe during the first um, few weeks after that, life seemed quite rosy. I know it did for me. The world seemed brighter. A whole way, new way of life opened up. It was a really exciting time. Just like the, that tiny caterpillar, he spent the first few weeks of his life enjoying all that was put in front of him. But he got bigger and bigger as he ate his way through different fruit and vegetables. And he got fatter. But then one day, all of a sudden, everything changed. The caterpillar found himself in a sticky mess. He spun a cocoon and it must have seemed that everything in his life had gone wrong. Like being trapped in a dark tunnel with no way out and no way through. And I guess at different times in our lives, all of us have found ourselves in that dark place where the world we've taken for granted that seems so bright and rosy suddenly falls apart. Where nothing seems to make sense anymore and where the future looks bleak. Those are the times I think it really helps to remember that caterpillar. He was stuck in the cocoon for two whole weeks. Might not seem long to us, but I guess it's quite a long time in the life cycle of a caterpillar. But at the end of those two weeks, he found the energy and the willpower to start nibbling a hole in the cocoon. And it wasn't long before he emerged into the light of day, totally changed totally transformed from the inside out. Paul encouraged us, us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That means learning to think and act differently, to see everything in life through God's eyes instead of our own. We need to be close to him to do that. But when we take our ordinary lives, our ordinary everyday lives, sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around lives, and place them before God as an offering, it's amazing what God will do and can do through us. Knowing that God wants only the best for us, letting go of our own agendas and discovering his perfect plans for us is life-changing. It takes the pressure off too. 
And we really take on board what Paul is saying in this passage. It gives a whole meaning, a whole new meaning to every aspect of our lives. It means we don't have to let the world around us dictate the way that we should live. We don't have to listen to people with different values and different beliefs telling us what to think and how to behave. We don't have to let the world squeeze us into its mould anymore. Once we're secure in our identity as children of God, we don't have to conform to the standards of the world either. We can choose to stand up and be counted. We can choose to stand out from the crowd. We don't have to try and impress people. We don't have to compete with one another. But we do need to be careful that we don't start thinking too highly of ourselves. Paul reminds us that everything we have, everything we are, comes from God. All our gifts and all our abilities. We're all equally important. And just like the parts of a human body or a caterpillar's body, we all need one another to function properly. Sometimes in churches, just the same as in the workplace or the classroom, we can look around at everyone else. Either we wish we could be more like them or actually secretly we're really glad we're not like them. But comparing ourselves to other people in any walk of life isn't good for us. It can leave us feeling jealous, envious, can make us feel smug and proud or it can make us feel totally useless and inadequate. What Paul's saying here is really important. No one is any better or any worse than anyone else. God hasn't given us our gifts for our own benefit. He's given them so that together we can flourish. It's a blessing that we've all got different strengths and weaknesses, isn't it? You know, I need other people's strengths. Um, I've got loads of weaknesses. Um, and it reminds us that none of us um, can manage on our own for very long. We need one another. God, our Father's put a lot of um, thought and effort into creating each and every one of us totally unique individuals. He doesn't make mistakes. He knows exactly what purpose he's created us for. Our job is to work together, help one another to discover the gifts that he's given us, and then to put everything we can into using those gifts the very best possible way we can. The first gift that Paul mentions is prophecy and um, the ability to hear what God is saying through his word today. We need people who can fine tune in to what God's saying. People who won't always get it right. People who don't claim to always be right, but people who are willing to speak out and to share what God puts on their hearts when it's appropriate to do that, not to keep it all to themselves. Most of the tasks that Paul um, lists in verses 7 and 8 require effort, enthusiasm, hard work. Christian service isn't a hobby um, that we can play at when we feel like it. It's a divine calling, a calling for life. We need to take responsibility too for the way we use our gifts. If our gift is serving, we need to do it enthusiastically. Put a smile on our faces. If it's giving, we need to give generously. If it's acts of kindness, we need to do them cheerfully. We need to do everything um, in good grace, in thanksgiving for what God's given to us. And one of the gifts we most often perhaps overlook is the gift of encouragement. Encouragement's a fantastic gift. We all need encouragers, don't we? People who get alongside us and encourage us to keep going when we feel like giving up. Going back to our caterpillar, I'm not too, much, too sure how much encouragement he got from his mates. But something deep inside him kept him going when he could have given up. There, um, shut away in the darkness of the cocoon, Caterpillar could simply have shriveled up and died. But he didn't. All through the struggles and the confusion, that little voice deep down inside, somewhere, convinced him that he was made for something more, just like us. He wasn't designed to crawl along in the dirt forever, just looking out for number one. He was designed to fly. He was designed to bring beauty and joy, life and hope to the people in the world around. He was designed to reveal to them something of God's glory. And God's love. 
knowing he was created for a purpose, gave him the strength and the will he needed to start nibbling away at that cocoon until eventually he began to see daylight. Just like that caterpillar, every single one of us has been designed for something more. There's only two reasons that a caterpillar doesn't make it to be a butterfly. Either he gets sick or he gets eaten. Well, we don't want that to any of us, though. We certainly don't want to be eaten. Uh, and we need to pray for one another when we do get sick. So through all these challenging times, let's keep looking out for one another, praying for one another, supporting and encouraging one another to be the best we really can be. And let's keep our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, offering our lives to him every day. He's the one who will give us the strength to overcome every obstacle in our way and enable us like that butterfly to become the people that God has created us to be. People who can fly and reveal his love to the world around. Father, we thank you for the amazing um, evidence of transformation in your creation, even in a tiny creature like a caterpillar and a butterfly. If you love them that much, how much more do you love us? So Lord, we pray that we can come to you as living sacrifices and allow you to change us and transform us and use us. Amen. Let's pray to our Father God together. Thank you, Father, that we can always come to you when we need your help and you always listen to our prayers and answer them. Send your Spirit to help focus our thoughts on things which are important to you and to give us compassionate hearts to speak and act in love to those in need. Let's pray for all people affected by coronavirus and other illnesses and all those who care for them. Lord, we bring to you those people across the world who are ill with the virus, those who are recovering and those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray they will know your presence and your comfort and will realise that you love them and that you have not brought them to this situation. We thank you for all the medical care available in the UK and for the dedication of doctors and nurses and carers. We pray for their protection from the virus. We pray too for those in countries where people live very close together with very little clean water or soap and very few doctors and nurses. We think especially of Brazil, India and Africa. We ask for medical aid to reach those people and for their governments to show them proper consideration and care. We pray for all the people who have other illnesses, that their diagnoses and treatments may be brought up to date, that their lives will be improved as soon as possible. Now let's pray for peace in our world and for all people, animals and habitats affected by wars, natural disasters and global warming. Lord, as we look around the world, we see such inequality, poverty, strife and wickedness, political upheaval and injustice. We pray for all people caught up in cycles of violence and aggression, especially in countries torn apart by war and famine, like Yemen, Syria and Gaza. Countries with unjust oppressive governments, like Zimbabwe, Libya and China. Countries where human trafficking and slavery are commonplace as in Eastern Europe and Saudi Arabia. Shine your light into every dark place. Expose those wicked practices and bring the lawbreakers to justice. Send your people into places where they can rescue the needy and show them your great love. Show mercy to the starving, the injured, the orphaned, the unjustly imprisoned, the homeless and refugees. We also pray for the people of Beirut after the explosion. Lord, help us to protect your world and all its inhabitants. Give us the wisdom and motivation to stop damaging behaviour and habits. Lord, we bring all the people of your kingdom before you and ask for their protection, unity and faith. We admire so much the way they persevere despite much persecution in many countries, that they are doing so much good wherever they are, 
and spreading your gospel, often at risk of their own lives. Strengthen them, Lord, with your spirit. Give us the courage to stand up for you here in the UK and to be known as disciples of Jesus. We also pray for all the people who are cared for by Christians, that they may see Jesus in them and they will come to faith in him. Lord, we thank you for your provision for us and we pray for hungry people around the world and here in the UK. We give you thanks that the earth is able to produce so much food. We pray for nations that cannot grow enough food due to drought and locusts, hurricanes or floods. We pray that the nations which have surplus food will give generously to those in need. We pray for the four food banks in the UK that they will be able to cope with the growing number of people who are struggling to feed their families, especially since the virus lockdown. We bring our nation before you. At the moment it is reeling from the effects of coronavirus in every area of life. It is very hard for people to accept that lifestyles need to change in order to protect ourselves and those around us. Family, friends, colleagues, fellow travellers. We pray for the Queen, the Prime Minister, the Government and all the MPs and local councils. That fair, just, compassionate governance will be given and that democratic principles will be upheld for the good of all the UK people. We will pray also for the peace between the four countries of the UK, that they will work together and not seek to fulfil their own agendas at this very difficult time. We lift all teachers and centres of education to you, all pupils and students, especially the GCSE and A-level students who are upset with the way the exam grades have been reached. We give thanks for the NHS, emer emergency services, armed forces, volunteer drivers and carers. We lift to you any people we know who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray for your healing touch in their lives. We lift to you all who are unemployed or fear losing their jobs soon. Shopkeepers, delivery workers, long distance drivers, farmers, factory workers, musicians, artists, dancers, singers. Protect them and provide for them, we pray. We pray for those who are isolated, lonely and depressed. Strengthen them, Lord, and find them friends to support them. Lastly, Lord, we bring ourselves to you. Thankful for your abiding love and provision. Grateful for all Jesus has done for us, comforted by your Holy Spirit's presence, guided by your powerful hand. Keep us close to you and to your Holy Word, Lord. Help us to live your way and to hold lightly to the world's pleasures anything that would seek to lure us away from depending on you. Give us the courage to be known as your people and guide us as to the next steps towards bringing your kingdom to our communities, especially to Bobbing and Sittingbourne. Bless our leaders, Sue, Jan, Mike and Liz, and help them all to work together for your glory. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now will you join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we come to the end of our service this morning, thank you to everyone who's taken part. Thank you um, for those who've made it possible um, for us to be up online. Um, and thank you to Liam um, and the team who've been um, entertaining, hopefully, some of our families um, this morning in the church building. Um, it is safe. We're being very careful about social distancing, face masks, um, antibacterial gel. And we are taking a lot of care. So it is safe to come back but we do need to still keep numbers um, to limit. So I'm going to finish now and um, we're saying the blessing. 
you know you can join in with that as well. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Have a great week. Hope to see some of you soon. And if you've got any needs, prayer needs, practical needs, make sure you let us know. God bless. Bye.